Hello, and welcome to another episode of Fretcast Transformers School. On this episode, we will be talking about another of the 13 primes, as you probably guessed. This time, we will be talking about Nexus Prime. And so here is everything you need to know about Nexus Prime. One of the 13, Nexus Prime is the first combiner and is often associated with Mirified Energine, and sometimes he's known as Nexus Maximus. Known as the Wizard of Forms, Nexus Prime was all about change and mutability. As the first and greatest combiner, he was able to merge together any robots in the new combined forms at will, or separate himself into multiple independent components. When standing alone, his body seemed to shift or be overlaid with ever-changing forms and combinations he might take. Powerful, proud, and frequently unpredictable, even those who knew him best. Uh, Nexus Prime was also full of good humor and can be a bit of a prankster at times. He was the mad experimenter of the 13 and is fascinated by changing states of matter and the creation of new elements in Solar Forges. The shared affinity for creation led Solus Prime, the maker of the 13, to have special feelings for Nexus, which in turn seemed to have earned him the enmity of Megatronus and Liege Maximo. The line novels. Megatronus killed Solus Prime in an act of rage, one that drove a wedge between the remaining 13. After the defeat of Liege Maximo's schemes, Nexus took custody of many of Solus Prime's creations, including the Star Saber, the Cyber Caliber, the Chaos Edge, the Blade of Time, and his own Omni Saber. The Omni Saber was a part of Nexus Prime's body, and he secreted the Cyber Caliber away inside his form as well before splitting himself into five component robots Clocker, Mainspring, Chain Drive, Pinion, and Cannon Spring. Each component held a fraction of the cyber caliber within themselves and was also charged with guarding one of the blades of time. Only by assembling the blades of time and using them to open a gateway to the hollow realm of Vector Prime could the power of the cyber caliber as well be reassembled. What happened to the star saber is unknown, but Alpha Trine believed that Nexus Prime left it in the care of another before separating himself. The sub-sleeves of Nexus Prime scattered throughout the colony worlds of Cybertron. They remained apart for so long that each forgot their true nature, and no longer recalled being part of Nexus Prime or the Thirteen. All but Cannon Spring even forgot their duty to safeguard the Blades of Time and the Cyber Caliber. Clocker and Mainspring wound up on Velocitron where they remained slightly out of place as mechanics instead of the speed-driven racers who ruled the planet. Panyan ended up on Junkion, assimilating well into the culture. Uh, Chain Drive found himself on Cybertron and eventually became part of the Autobot Resistance movement and eventually, or alongside um, Ultra Magnus and Alpha Kaya, after the Ark's departure. Cannon Spring ended up in a crippled ship in Cybertron's deep orbit until the Prospector Xer triggered some latent transwarp energy on board, transporting them both to Junkion. Cannon Spring remained inert for over a million years inside his ship after they crashed. Nexus Prime began to come together once more thanks to the Matrix, which directed Optimus through space to the various colony worlds. As the Ark came to Velocitron, Optimus discovered two pieces of the Blades of Time and fatefully agreed to bring Clocker and Mainspring on the next leg of his journey when they asked. On Junkion, Prime and Coward heard Pinion while recovering the, a third blade, and the fourth was retrieved from Axer. Meanwhile, back on Cybertron, Alpha Trion and Wheeljack concocted a method of sending a scout after Optimus Prime by keying residual space bridge energy to the signature of the Matrix. Instinctively, Alpha Trion decided Chain Drive was the proper choice and he brought with him the fifth blade. Once all five blades and the other four components assembled on Junkion, the combined energy was enough to rekindle the inert cannon string. 
bringing him back to fully functioning and allowing them to reassemble into Nexus Prime, displaying the ability to hold more weapons than an armory. Nexus Prime pulled forth both his Omni Saber and Chaos Edge and also passed the Cyber Calibur over to Optimus Prime. Although he refused to kill anyone, Nexus Prime essentially held off the Decepticons and the Star Seekers for a time. On intimidation alone, as Megatron and Thundertron left to pursue other goals, Nexus Prime reclaimed his swords and gave some last words of encouragement to Optimus Prime before splitting himself once more, reducing into a new set of five protoforms. Nexus Prime vanished into space and the annals of history once more. IDW Generation 1 Continuity In the primitive age that followed the departure of the Knights of Cybertron, Nexus Prime joined his tribe with those of Solus, Vector, Alchemist Prime, and Alpha Trion in Crystal City. Like the other four, he knew Onyx Prime, but he himself was disguised by, or disgusted by Onyx's bestial horde and took time to become acclimated to them. He had a brother in the east who ruled his own kingdom. Nexus was the first recorded owner of the mysterious artifact known as the Enigma of Combination. He evidently chose to keep the artifact's true nature as a physical object a secret, with most believing the Enigma part of the name referred to a puzzle that had to be solved to allow for combination. One evening, Vector Prime barged in on a meeting to announce the approach of Onyx and a crony, as well as the news that Septimus Prime had perished at the hands of the conqueror of his lands, was on a warpath across Cybertron. Despite Solus and Onyx's dismissal, Nexus felt Septimus had still been a Prime, such as they were before he asked who Onyx Minions was. The newcomer introduced himself as Liege Maximo, who had also lost his lands to the army of Darklanders. At Alpha Trion's urging, the Primes allowed Onyx and Liege Maximo into their alliance. When the time of battle came, Nexus wished to join his followers in combat, but remained behind at Solus's urging. As the Titans arrived, Onyx leapt into the fray, only to recognize the enemy commander as his old friend Megatronus. Nexus was shocked at this development before the eight primes joined forces. In the aftermath, RC expressed the belief that the alliance would attract Nexus's brother to him. Unbeknownst to the primes, the bot who they believed to be Onyx Prime was in fact a tri time traveling shockwave from 10 million years in the future who had engineered the entire conflict to bring the primes together as history recorded. Power turned the Nexus into something of a get really, believing that all non-primes should serve their prime masters. Along with members of his court was a titan master by the name of Infinitus, who wholeheartedly believed in his master's elitist approach to social engineering. The 13 primes ruled their planet peacefully until Liege Maximo and Megatronus conspired together goaded on by Shockwave's machinations, and started the first Cybertronian civil war via the murder of Solus Prime. While Megatronus fled Cybertron, Nexus and Quintus managed to restrain Maximo before trying to exile him aboard Vigilum. Nexus allied himself with Onyx Prime during the war. He used his Enigma of Combination to create the Headmasters. Humanoid Transformer combined with Beast. Galvatron found the whole concept disgusting and single-handedly slaughtered the Headmasters before coming after Nexus himself. Nexus sneered that Galvatron was a lowborn that couldn't kill him, and Galvatron responded by doing just that. The realization that a Prime could be killed by someone other than another Prime caused most of the remaining Primes to flee the planet. He was survived by Infinis, Infinitus, who vowed to keep his master's teachings alive and eventually apply them to all Cybertron, especially the parts about forced servitude to the prime. So, that's everything that you need to know about Nexus Prime. That's all I have to say, so thanks for listening, and goodbye.